Uh, welcome to the show. I am your host, Alex Kessler, Ben Damon. Uh, we are back, and this is our little breakdown on the mystical archives being added through Strixhaven to Arena, and specifically to Historic. Now, Michael Grothy has strong op- negative opinions in this world, partially because up to this point, he's been like, it's just legacy. Every card that's ever been printed is legal. But there are seven cards that are not legal that are added from this set, and they are Channel, Counterspell, Dark Ritual, Demonic Tutor, Lightning Bolt, Natural Order, and Swords the Plowshare. Now, the argument for why they're they're being added to Arena to begin with is because every single pack has a Mystical Archive in it card. So these are pretty significant includes for the limited format. Like, if you don't include these seven cards, limited in Strixhaven just works differently. In a way, like, not having Channel available seems like a pretty big difference and all of these cards kind of have that power level effect so i understand one more time one more time you said channel lightning bolt demonic tutor swords to plowshares uh swords to plowshares natural order lightning bolt demonic tutor dark ritual counterspell channel so yeah so these are still being added to arena so if you play gladiator if you play arena brawl which has a different ban list than regular uh, or historic brawl you can play these if you invent a new format these are all legal, but in historic, they are banned out the gate. And But otherwise, there's a ton of new cards being added. Some of them are insanely powerful. The one card on here that seems silly to me is Lightning Bolt. Yeah, it's like, why? It feels like they're not adding it purely to have it be, to have historic feel differentiated from modern. But like Fatal Push and Thoughtseize were added. So to me, it feels like if you're, that's the one card. And these cards could be unbanned, right? Like a year from now, it's like Lightning Bolt's unbanned. Swords of Plowshares makes sense. It's the reason Path wasn't in Jumpstart. They removed Path from the Jumpstart product. Swords of Plowshares is no longer in it. That makes sense to me. And the other ones are all like Channer, Counterspell, Dark Ritual, Natural Order, Demonic Tutor, all cards that I, I like. Channels They're like insanely band. powerful. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like channels. I, I mean, I think, I think most of those are very smart. I think, as you mentioned, Lightning Bolt's the one head scratcher that's just like, I mean, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it supercharges in a way that they just don't want. I guess I understand that. I think I think they want three, four, and specifically five drops that have three toughness to be playable. And Fatal Push, like, can't hurt creatures that are five and bigger. I think that's where they see the difference. Is that, that's the only thing I can think of, is that Lightning Bolt scales better to more powerful things. Just add Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt's so cool. I don't know. That's where I'm at. Unban it. That's the only card there uh, that I see. Beyond that, though, there is an insane list of cards being added to the format, uh, including Inquisition of Kozlak uh, is being added, which is fascinating to include. But I think like the Storm cards to me, Fa- Faithless Looting is being added to Modern. Like I'm going to play Arclight Phoenix decks tomorrow. Yeah, I know. Like, That's crazy, right? Mana Tithe. There's like, I think, where's the, where's the other one? Grapeshot. Grapeshot. Tainted Pact. I think Regrowth, not that it's like on the power level of some of the other cards we're talking about, but I just think Regrowth is a great card. Lightning Helix getting added is a big deal. Tendrils Uh, of Agony is the other one that I was like, what? Oh, and Brainstorm. Brainstorm's being added. (laughs) You can play Brainstorm Historic. crazy. (laughs) Chaos Chaos Warp is getting added. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, yeah, to me, to me, like Brainstorm, Memory Lapse being in it as a counter spell is also a big deal. Yeah, there's Mind's Desire is another card that's being added. As far as storm cards, you have Tendrils, Grape Shot, and Mind's Desire available in this format. I like released it. Dude, Defurious Protection. That card's so good. Yep. <laughs> that yep. card's insanely good. This is my point like earlier, like when we were talking about uh, Magic Arena, I don't want to buy a deck. I, like I can play whatever deck I build is going to be so drastically altered by like Three of these cards being added. If Strixhaven wasn't added to Magic and only three of these cards were added, almost any three of them, any five of them, I will say, could like alter alter historic from face value. I'm super excited. It feels like they wanted it's weird that they wanted Storm on Arena. Like that's the decision they made. They were like, you know, we just let's just put Storm. Like the fact that Storm is legal, the, the someone wrote, wrote a really good joke. Like it's not the Storm scale anymore, it's the Bolt scale. The the Storm scale is the is it's the keyword mechanics, right? It's the level of power. Storm is the most powerful, it, is the not, idea. It's not power level, it's likelihood to be reprinted into standard. Got it. Right. It's Mark Rosewater's list of cards that are likely to be reprinted in the standard. And Storm is classically the top of that scale. And the I think the only cards that are above Storm are like like anti and banding or like weird stuff that just doesn't work anymore. But in historic, Storm is being added before Lightning Bolt. 
Yeah, it's like Storm, Dredge, Delve, like mechanics like that. I think the Mystical Archive is completely insane. I think it's crazy how many cards are getting added all at once. But I also think that more than likely, I mean, this is this is what this says to me. What this says to me is that they remember a time when Modern was introduced and people were excited and people started to invest time into playing Modern and it became super popular. And then they look at the post, the, the sort of post hiatus that we've all been on here and they think about the way it's going to look and that probably people will return to playing Paper Modern. But what if the format has slowed down? What if it's slowed down because people find it less interesting for whatever reason? Well, I think what this signals to me is that they're interested in historic having a, an actual chance at feeling like modern. Because you introduce this many cards to historic, it's going to feel like modern. The, mm-hmm. the, like There's already enough powerful cards in historic as it is. You introduce this level of power to historic, I think that historic is going to start to feel like modern pretty fast. One one thing I think that is cool about this is is the split between cards in the mystical archive. Like there's like staples of every format, but one of the things they definitely did were staples of standards of the future. And by that, like like Michael, when they first revealed the opt, talked about this on the podcast where it's like. If I get four ops, this is my ops forever. Every standard deck I ever have, I'm going to use these ops. If I get these lightning bolts, I'm going to use these lightning bolts. If I get these village rights, right? Like if I have this village right, I'm going to have four of them. And anytime I need village rights and standard moving forward, I'm going to use this sweet copy of it. There's like a lot of like very obvious cards. Shock is another good example. Duress. These are cards that they're just going to reprint forever. Yeah, negate. Like Like eliminate is going to be in standard again. And it's kind Are of, you at all surprised that Stone Rain is going to be in <laughs> Stone Rain well, is going to be in historic? Some of it, like Stone Rain and Regrowth, do feel like more back in my day. Remember, like that's Urza's Rage, right? That was, I think, my biggest complaint of all of them is Urza's, Urza's Rage. Like, I don't know why that card keeps getting reprinted. I saw you. I saw you tweeting about this the other day. It's like it has. It, it was the mythic face on a dual deck, and this and in my, one of the the like master sets. I don't, why is that, why do people, I guess, I guess like it was very good in standard in 2001 and people look fondly on it enough to get reprinted a bunch. It might be because it's one of the few cards that was that iconic that have the name Urza on them Mm. is the one thing I can think of where it's like, that makes sense. You can't, there's no other like, but like Urza, like a lot of old Urza's cards are bad. They're the lands, which are hard to reprint because there's three of them and they're too good often if you reprint them into a format. Urza's Rage is like just generically boring enough that it's but good enough that you can keep reprinting it, I guess. Meh, meh. The artwork's also <laughs> amazing. It like the my biggest I think my biggest complaint about this whole situation is that between these and the Japanese versions, which are all some of the most gorgeous cards probably printed in magic history, I don't have enough money for these cards to exist. And I'm There's so yeah. I I want all of I want four of all of them, and I can't. I don't want to pay. I don't have the money for that. <laughs> so is the deal that the Japanese printings are? If you buy the Japanese language packs, this is what you get in those packs, and if you buy the American ones, this is what you get. What if you buy French? What if you buy Italian? What if you buy you get the Spanish? You get, you get the you get the regular ones. It's only the Japanese ones Correct. that are going to have these. So, so those are going to sell out crazy fast, right? Japanese box- boxes will sell out really fast. Uh, obviously, if you go to Japan, you can just get a box. The one thing is... So this is actually something I like was wondering, because for the last three years, the spring set has a special Japanese type of promo situation. Last year with Ikoria, it was the Godzilla cards, which were in English, other than a few that were Japanese exclusive, like Mecha Godzilla, but they were also... Like Godzilla is ostensibly attached to Japan. And then uh, the year before that was the the anime Planeswalkers, right? So with like famous anime artists and manga manga cut artists doing Planeswalkers. Each Planeswalker got a promo. And and like, I was like, why is the spring set that? And it ends up that the school year in Japan starts in April. So similar to how in the US, September, which is when our school year starts, uh, the... That's the normally and forever has been the big focus set, right? Like that's when we would start a new block. That's like the beginning of the year. That's when Wizards put its big next push. It would do the core set just before that as like a preemptiveness for that happening. That's when rotation would happen in Japan. The new school year starts and Japan is, is I think the second largest 
by density group of magic players uh in the world so it makes sense it also like for shows i'm watching uh i was like why they like new new years start at weird times and i was like it's spring why and now i understand uh in japan the new school year school ends in march they don't have like a summer vacation school ends in march and the next school year starts in april so yeah that's what that's why these promos are happening but yes yeah, so similar to the war of the sparks ones every japanese pack will have one of these promos in it it will be the the alternate style I believe in collector boosters from Strixhaven, you do get one Japanese version of a card also included in every single one. And then X amount of packs in English also get one. So you they will be available here as well uh, in regular packs. But if you want to guarantee them, just find a box of Japanese Strixhaven uh, to get a bunch of them at once, which is a thing I will probably attempt uh, or just buy all the singles I want. I just don't. I have decision fatigue. I don't know which ones of these I want. I just want all of them. It's crazy that there are so many cool versions of so many iconic cards now that like if you're trying to get a cool non like traditional version of a sweet card, there's just like a million things to choose. I'm glad I didn't pre-order much of the old border stuff because you got you opened like all of it. No, because I'm going to spend that money on these. These are way cooler. (laughs) (laughs) I'm also excited for them to be added to historic. Uh, As I said, I think like I just want to play Faithless Looting. Give me a format I can pay, play Faithless Looting. I'll play it. The fact that I no longer can play it in Modern makes me sad. The fact that I now can play it in, in Historic is dope. We literally last week went on a whole conversation about how our preview card like really leaned into a cool Mardo Pyromancer with Magecraft. There's a, a bunch of other cool Magecraft cards. I think you could do Mardo Pyromancer in Historic. You don't have Pyromancer. Yeah, I mean, you but... have. No, you do. You have Young Pyromancer. Oh, yeah, you do. You do now, right? They added it. From one of the anthologies. I think the second anthology yeah, 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 had yeah, Pyromancer. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so you can just make Mardu Pyromancer. I think it has every card because it, it has. Does it have Bedlam Revelers? You, have Thoughtsies, even a key you got Thoughtsies, you, don't, you have Inquisition. You don't have Lingering Souls is the one piece you're missing. True, right? You need to add yeah, Lingering they didn't Souls. Wizards add Lingering Souls to Historic. I'm going to tweet <laughs> that right now. And then someone's going to be like, it's there. And we're going to be like, Marshall, edit this out of the podcast. <laughs> While uh, while Alex is doing this, because I think we're going to wrap up this, I think we're going to wrap up this section and get into the next section of the show. But before we do, as he is tweeting that, I want to do just a quick reminder to everybody here. I've been talking about this last few weeks, but uh, by the time you hear this, I will have released my first song for my album. It's coming out this summer. I'll be on tour in August, so hopefully I can meet some of you guys. If any of you want to come out and hang out, I'll be putting the full album out in June, and the first song is available on Spotify, on Apple Music, on Amazon, all the various places you can get it. So. You can follow me on Twitter and see. I'm sure I'll be posting about it, or you can just look it up on Spotify. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media. Sending podcasts into the future.